Um, this is a uh, so-called accelerated processing unit, or APU. Um, APU is a typical heterogeneous processor, which consists of low power cores and GPU units. And these are on the same chip. Low power cores are used for uh, general purpose computing, for management, uh, for configuration of the system. Um, it has a typical you know, x86 core with some levels, uh, two levels of cache, uh, level one and level two. And um, these two cores each consist of 32 kilobytes of level one uh, caches and also uh, 512 kilobytes of level two caches. The um, data transfer speed uh, is at gigabytes uh, per second level. Um, compared to this low power cores, these GPU cores are um, different, of course, and it's not x86, and it's its own uh, SIMD core, which um, has several um, uh, SIMD, uh, uh, SIMD units to uh, execute SIMD instructions, uh, and each of them has uh, low local data storage um, or local data space and these are considered um, private memory to these SIMD cores and um, among these uh, SIMD cores they share this uh, 512 kilobytes level 2 cache so this one uh, as we see later in the context of OpenCL, this is called local memory. And this is what we call um, private memory. So private memory um, is accessible only to this particular core. And this local memory is shared by um, a group of cores, or you, know, you can think about the execution units. Um, on this chip, there's shared memory bus and memory controller, which help these low power cores and GPU units to talk to the outside uh, memory subsystem. So you have this DDR3 system memory, which is you know, much larger, um, slower, although, and it's shared by all the uh, units. And this is what we will call it, uh, global memory in the context of OpenCL. Um, we will, you know, again later mention and discuss what is local memory and you know uh, private memory and global memory. But I just want to point out um, by using this diagram, you will see um, the locations of this memory, the ownership of this memory, uh, whether they are accessible to um, some cores will not, uh, and the size. And as we expect, the local memory, sorry, the private memory uh, is typically smaller than the local memory, uh, which is typically smaller, uh, much smaller than the global memory. Intel Sandy Bridge uh, is uh, another example. It's uh, APU-like. Um, so you on this chip you have a few general purpose cores and um, in addition to those you have an embedded graphic processor so you uh, will be able to um, accelerate some of the graphics processing tasks on this one and if you look at um, the um, current laptop processors from Intel or from AMD they typically have on the chip uh, some small number of general purpose cores, maybe you know two uh, two core or um, four core uh, processor with on chip integrated memory uh, graphics processing unit. Uh, they call it uh, Iris. Um, you know um, that's a, a typical on chip graphics processing um, unit um, integrated with um, some number of general purpose cores. Okay, 
Now we want to talk about GPU. GPU is um, a a large um, market nowadays uh, that provides um, processors not only doing graphics processing, but also many people, especially in the um, uh, recent AI and you know machine learning uh, field, people have been using extensively this general uh, graphics processing unit, GPUs, to speed up complex workloads. Um, I just want to use uh, several slides to uh, discuss what's in the GPU and also to, um, to introduce you know, how it's related to OpenCL. Here's this example of modern GPU architecture. Um, you know, what you see here is you, know, you have a large number of processors, cores, uh, to be more specific. Uh, you can think about this as a core, although it's called a shader core, uh, but you know, it doesn't matter. You can think about this as the smallest um, unit um, that you can um, schedule instructions onto. And um, the terminologies are different from vendor to vendor. Uh, they may not call these uh, cores. Uh, they may call it as compute units or streaming multiprocessors, depending on the, the vendor. Uh, but you know, the common thing is that you will find many of those, um, typically at least tens, oftentimes hundreds, or even thousands of these uh, on a single chip, on the new ones. Uh, they uh, are able to access uh, some on-chip memory. Uh, this is a level two cache on-chip. Uh, and it's multi-banked, so they can be uh, accessed in parallel, and the access uh, throughput is pretty high. On this chip, it has memory controllers. Um, this, uh, you know, this connects to high-speed um, GPU memory. GPU memory is different from the memory subsystem to a general purpose processor. Um, you know, the main reason is that when you have these many cores, if you want to feed them, this memory subsystem has to be uh, very fast in terms of you know, the capability to transfer data back and forth. So you find you know hundreds of gigabytes of, um, per second throughput uh, to these memory subsystem for GPUs, and the caches and the GPU memory subsystems are generally non-coherent. Um, so it's quite different from the general-purpose processors. General-purpose processors, when you have multiple level of caches, or when you have private level one cache in different cores. You still expect that when you issue an instruction, you are guaranteed to get the correct data or the consistent data across different uh, memory uh, or cache subsystems. There is cache coherent protocol to ensure that uh, for general purpose uh, uh, cache and memory hierarchy. For GPUs, um, there's no such hard requirement. Uh, they are uh, generally non-coherent. So they, you, they just use these um, as a separate um, space that they can store data. Um, there's no uh, cache co coherence protocol to um, ensure the consistency. The reason behind that is that it makes the design simpler. Also, it gives the um, chance to get much higher um, performance when these many cores are operating at the same time. They do not have to be blocked um, due to the memory, uh, the cache coherence protocol. The compute units or cores are based on SIMD hardware. Uh, of course, the compute units sometimes uh, in, in different vendors uh, they call differently, um, but the idea is that these uh, smaller cores 
with many of them on this chip, each of these computer units um, execute CMD instructions. Both AMD and NVIDIA have 16 white uh, CMDs, um, which means that they can uh, execute um, 16, um, they can perform the operation on 16 pieces of data uh, at the same time. Uh, but they, the uh, mapping of hardware threads to these units are different. Uh, they, they can group the work items uh, into a larger group and map to these CMDs in different batches. Um, and that you know, depends on uh, exactly uh, which chip, uh, the configuration, the parameters of each chip. But under the under line, you the key point is that these small computer units has um, CMD hardware to support the operation um, on multiple piece of data at the same time. Also, in this course, it has large register files. Um, it supports uh, fast contact switching. Um, when you have multiple threads running, uh, you don't want to, them to be blocked to, you know, or have to load their states from lower level memory. If we have large register files, we can maintain a large number of hardware threads uh, and execute them um, and do contact switching very fast. Both vendors have a combination of automatic level one cache and a user managed uh, scratch pad. Um, and that's the uh, local data share um, by AMD and share memory by NVIDIA. And this is what we call the um, private memory to these computer units. And scratch pad, uh, scratch pad is heavily banked in a very high bandwidth um, to support uh, very fast uh, operations um, from these CMD instructions. Work items, this is the term, uh, terminology that used in OpenCL context. Uh, we will not talk too much about this uh, definition, but think about uh, the uh, things you want to compute. Um, you can you know, divide your um, tasks or your data uh, into smaller pieces, and uh, this work item is basically the, kind of the smallest piece you want to perform the computation. And these work items are grouped uh, into hardware threads. Uh, uh, from the hardware perspective, it has different names, uh, wave fronts or ROPs. Um, but the idea is that to group these work items into a group, and that's the concept of the work group. We'll talk about work items, work group, uh, when we you know, go into the third and fourth um, um, lecture. And single instruction stream executed on CMD hardware. Um, you can have 64 work items, um, 32 in a warp, uh, depends on the um, um, vendor. And we said earlier that you know, you have a 16 wide CMD. So in this case, if you have a 64 work items, you actually cannot map all of them the same time to these um, um, CMD hardware units. You have to you know, do a little batch of that. Um, so that's, you know, at the hardware level, how these computer units, how these cores on the GPUs schedule these work items. For control flow, um, so when you execute, um, let's say you have one instruction you want to perform uh, on multiple data, and you will likely have branch instructions. So branch instructions will cause some deviation of your executing path. So some of the computation you perform on uh, you know, some data may not be valid or may not be the ones that you want to compute. So in this case, uh, because the same instructions still uh, compute, 
So you have to have a way to kind of determine what are the results um, val valid and what results are invalid. So we need to discard the invalid results uh, due to the outcomes of these branch instructions. So the control flow is typically handled by uh, masking the CMD lanes. Uh, so some of the uh, computation are going to be discarded. And that's another reason that in later uh, classes we'll you know, talk about how we should avoid having these you know, branch instructions or how do we uh, take consideration uh, of these branch instructions and to um, improve performance. Um, Single instruction multiple threads uh, is a terminology um, defined by NVIDIA. It denotes that multiple software threads sharing instruction stream. Um, they, these threads, they, um, they are executing on the uh, SIMD uh, hardware, um, you know, but they have their own program counter. So they have their own execution streams. And the, um, but these these um, these software threads may share the SIMD hardware. So there's cases that any divergence um, between the threads will have to be you know, uh, managed well, and that's another case of divergence uh, between I, uh, work items. Uh, fortunately, OpenCL programmers uh, you, at the OpenCL framework level, you don't have to worry about. Uh, the exact execution, the scheduling of these uh, instruction streams at the hardware level. Uh, the processor vendors, they consider, um, it, they have this control logic in place in the hardware to help you handle these um, um, multiple software threads. Um, when we design our workload using OpenCL, we need just be keep uh, that in mind. Uh, so underneath, there are cases the performance is going to be hurt uh, if you uh, have uh, too much um, divergence between threads. Essentially, if that happens, you are wasting the, the computation cycles. Some of the things you compute may not be useful. 